Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about access modifiers and specifically what happens when we apply the protected access modifier to a constructor. I'm going to open up my website here to javacjava.com and select menu and Java OOP tutorials. This is my object oriented programming tutorials page. I'm going to scroll down here to protected constructor. When the protected access modifier is applied to a constructor, the following access is granted. Full access is granted to invoke the constructor from within the same package. In addition, access is granted to invoke the constructor from subclasses of another package through inheritance only. Some things to think about. Multiple overloaded constructors can have different uh, types of access modifiers applied to them. In other words, if you have uh, one constructor with protected access, other constructors can be public, default, or private access. Be mindful of the class access type. A standard outer class can only have either public or default access. A protected access constructor can be invoked through inheritance or reference from within the same package irregardless of the class access. A protected access constructor can only be invoked through inheritance outside of the package and only when it is contained in a public access class. Okay, let's come down here and highlight some code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. Move the browser off screen here. I have a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really quick by right clicking, selecting new and shortcut. Type in CM, CMD, then next and finish. All right, let's go and open up the command prompt. Type in Java C, which is the Java compiler. Press enter, you should see all this stuff scroll by. If you see an error message instead, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. Make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to uh, make a directory called Java with the MD command. I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. I'm going to change directories to the Java folder. And this is what I call my working directory, so I'll create all my packages and uh, classes underneath here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to have two packages. Um, one is named one and the other is named two. So, md1, and we'll change directory to the one folder, and we'll notepad constructor1.java. Okay, let's paste that in there, control V, and let's come up here and save it. So this is part of package, this is package one, and we're importing um, package two, all of the classes in package two. Two, con two classes here. Now this first one here, class constructor one, contains a protected no argument constructor here, right? And the first thing it does is it will um, call, uh, execute the super statement here. And then it will display this string literal to the console, protected constructor in package one. Okay, now this doesn't necessarily need to be public. It really doesn't matter. You know, I'd take that off, leave it on. We're only testing um, package level access here. So class tester is going to be extending constructor one, right? So constructor one is going to be the super class of the tester subclass, right? And we've got our main method entry point inside of there. First thing I'm going to be doing is creating a, um, a constructor one object type CO reference variable there and then using the new operator to return a reference to a new instance of constructor one object and invoke the constructor one constructor right here, right? Thereby printing off that. The next thing I'm going to do is create a new tester um, type object type T and set it equal to a reference for a new instance of a tester object and invoke the tester um, constructor. Now, even though it's not here, you should know by now that there is a default no argument 
um, constructor put in here with a call to uh, super, right? So by doing that, that will then call the constructor constructor1 with the default no argument one and display this to the console again. All right, let's ignore these that are here. Uh, let's go ahead and save this and let's go back to the DOS prompt down a folder. I'm going to make the two package and change directory to the two folder and notepad constructor2.java. Okay, I'm going to bring my website back over here, come down here and highlight this, control C to copy or right click and copy the browser off site there. Okay, control V to paste. This is our package 2. Very simple little um, constructor 2 here, class, and it's public. Um, and you know, before I talk about this, I'm just going to go over the, we'll just prove the, the local access stuff here for constructor 1. So what we've got right now is what I talked about here. Um, let's go ahead and compile this, see what happens there. Clear the screen, change down here, Java C1, and we want to compile the constructor 1.java. Okay, and if we type in dir space forward slash s, right, we'll see that um, all of the, like in the constructor 1.java, it compiled the constructor 1 bytecode for there, and the tester bytecode. Um, over in constructor 2 there, we don't have anything compiled yet there. So, and that's because even though we've imported 2.star here, we haven't actually tried to do any sort of reference to that class there. So it, it, uh, the second we uncomment those and recompile again, I'll show you there that at that point in time, it'll go ahead and um, automatically compile those because it'll be able to find them. So let's go ahead and type uh, Java to run the virtual machine and we want to out of the one package we want to invoke the tester method right and we get protected constructor in package one protected constructor in package one all right that looks good main method executed here um, we created our reference um, CO out of a new constructor one class and invoke the constructor one um, constructor here which printed that there then we created a new tester reference uh, to a new tester object and evoke the tester super or uh, tester constructor here which happens to be in uh, implicitly put in for us since we didn't actually declare one there with a call to super which then will basically call the um, constructor the default no argument well the no argument constructor for constructor one displaying that to the screen again Okay, so back to the website. Um, full access is granted to invoke the constructor from within the same package. A protected access constructor can be invoked through inheritance or reference from within the same package irregardless of class access. Right, and just to prove that class access doesn't make any difference, we'll just strip off the public, save that out, recompile it, and um, they run it. Okay, all right, so that is that. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna come down to this funky statement down here. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, a protected access constructor can only be invoked through inheritance outside of the package and only when it is contained in a public access class. So we're gonna have to put our thinking cap on for this one here. Um, what I'm going to do is uncomment this. I'm going to comment um, You know what I'm not going to uncomment that because this is the inheritance we want there first so um, The first thing I'm going I'm just going to you know strip this out right here plain old tester and We're just going to comment this comment this and comment this so in this particular thing, I'm trying to create a, a new reference um, uh, variable CT of constructor two type, and a new and new will return a reference to a new instance of constructor two and invoke its constructor two um, constructor. All right. So if we think about this here, 
we got public class constructor two. Will we be able to um, do this right here? Constructor two CT. Yeah, that's fine because we're, we're importing two dot star, so we'll definitely be able to get that right. Now we can create a new. Uh, we can create the object. We can instantiate the object because it's public. But what happens when we try to run X or invoke the constructor two? Is it's going to bomb out on that because constructor two over here is protected, right? And protected means that it can only be invoked through inheritance and we're not we're not inheriting it yet we're trying to create a reference to it right reference to an instance of it so um let's just show you what happens here all right let's make sure everything is saved out over here and let's go ahead type in java c and one dot constructor now one of the other things off topic here for java c is now that we are actually going to be using the, the constructor to, right? It will go ahead and compile it for us here, right? Or attempt to. Now here's the error we get, right? Constructor two has protected access in constructor two. That's constructor two, and then this is actually talking about the um, constructor here, right? Because it's got the opening and closing parentheses. And you'll see it, the caret is pointing over here at the new keyword, not over here, right? Um, basically, so that's telling us that, you know, when it tried to execute or tried to invoke the constructor too, it, it bombed out. It could not do it, right? So that is good. Let's go ahead and come back here, comment in this, comment this line, and uncomment this line. Now I am going to change Clax tester to extend constructor two, right? So we'll be able to inherit um, everything from constructor two. So in other words, constructor two will be the super class of tester, right? So when I create a new, when I, when we execute this line here, right? We're doing a, a tester type object, T, and then we're setting it equal to the reference of a new instance of tester, right? And then we invoke testers, um, constructor, right, which you can't see because it's sitting right here. It is the uh, default no argument constructor, and it's it makes a call to super. Of course, super comes out to its super class and says, okay, we need to execute the no, fault, no uh, argument constructor for the super class, which is this, right? And then it'll go ahead and basically come in here and say, okay, it's protected, yes. We're outside of the package, but we're, we're accessing this through inheritance. So we can go ahead and execute this line and then display this to the console. All right, let's go ahead and make sure everything is all saved up here and let's let it rip. Now let's go ahead and clear our screen. Java to invoke the virtual, that's uh, clear scan, I don't know, losing my mind or something tonight. Java to invoke the JVM and then the, um, the one package and then the tester. So we get protected constructor in package two. All right, so that looks good. We come back over here and uh, back to the website here. So a protected access constructor can only be invoked through inheritance outside of the package and only when it is contained in a public access class. All right. So that is basically what we just proved right there. Um, the only other thing is to basically say, you know, what if this isn't a public access class? What if it's like that, right? Well, then if you think about it, we won't even be able to uh, in, you know, inherit it up here, right? Because this, now we've told the class that it's going to have, you know, default package private access only, which means you can't even inherit it, right? So um, we come up here and we try to recompile that. We're gonna get error, constructor two is not public in two, and it's talking about the package.
cannot be accessed from outside package and it's pointing right here at constructor 2 where we're trying to inherit it. All right, so that's really the last thing I needed to note on that as far as the protected access goes. I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Close out of this, close out of that. And the it would really take a very rare, very special circumstance to warrant the use of a protected constructor. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.